Radio Cardiff. 98.7 FM. I'm down here at the Ice Freak in the middle of summer with Keith Chegwin and Olga Sharatenko. Why? <laughs> <laughs> That's a really good point, isn't it? Yeah, well, we always meet up like this. No, it's because Olga and I are coming back here in November and we're doing a promo tour because uh, we're doing the Nutcracker at the Wales Millennium Centre and I can't wait. It's the Nutcracker on ice. And uh, they phoned me up and they said, look, would I like to play the part of Drosselmeyer? And I thought, this is the most bizarre phone call in the whole wide world. I thought they got the wrong Keith, you know? <laughs> but, uh, but no, I'll be skating on ice and uh, we're hoping people will come and see us. Olga and I performed on uh, dancing on ice together and uh, I mean I have to admit if you watch dancing if you watch dancing on ice it's like watching uh, amateur dramatics <laughs> compared to what this lady can do with the imperial ice stars on stage uh, they're all stars from the uh, European sort of like uh, tent so to say and uh, between them there's 26 top skaters on stage who between them have won 250 gold silver and bronze medals and I'm skating with them <laughs> so I've really got to get my act together <laughs> That's an awful lot of medals, actually. Um, Olga, um, Strasvitia, как дела? Спасибо большое, очень хорошо. Is that Welsh? <laughs> no, no, that's my language. That's Russian. <laughs> and by the end of the, you know, by the by the time we uh, we come here to Cardiff and you, you know, skating with us, you'll be speaking Russian as well. Oh, well, oh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting the slow introduction into the language. Uh-huh. I tell you what, I bet you learn the swear words first. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's the way. Yeah. <laughs> this lady doesn't even swear. Oh, wow. <laughs> so, what's it like teaching someone like Keith how to skate? Incredible. Um, it's great fun because I, I love figure skating, obviously. I, I do it from my, from my childhood. But uh, to come to the eyes and teach anybody, but to, ha- to teach actually a celebrity who actually determined to, uh, to be uh, taught that way and to, be, to learn how to skate, uh, it's like when you're a child, your parents bring you to the to the to the ice rink, and you don't really have a choice when you when you're very young. But when you're an adult and you come to the to the ice, you want you want to learn it, and you're determined to learn it. And it's incredible to feel that. And to, for me to work with a person who wants to wants to learn figure skating is incredible. And it it could be tough sometimes because you you're responsible for you know uh, for for what you do on ice. You know, being serious, yeah, to you know, to get there, and you you're responsible for for lots of things. Um, you know, to teach this person right, sk- skating right. But uh, it's a great fun because for me it was great fun. Firstly, because Keith is such a person, and <laughs> secondly, you know, he made my work not being a work, but being an enjoyable time. That you know, it, uh, that makes it so easy to work mm-hmm. with him. It's really odd though because you said a very odd thing you said about teaching Keith to skate Mm -hmm. but Olga is not actually a coach what she is she's a performer and so uh, it's really weird by sort of her technique is to mold you into a skater so she's not actually going put crossover and do this and do that stand up straight or what have you she actually molds you into the uh, sort of like the music that you're trying to perform to so you know if you're happy or go lucky or what have you sort of number uh, then she gives you that technique so you're you're a technician really aren't you as far as teaching is concerned yeah. but I'll tell you what you want to see this lot on stage I I was absolutely gobsmacked I sat in the audience watching Sleeping Beauty thinking oh my god I was so embarrassed <laughs> that she had to skate with me because they are so fantastic on stage they've got wonderful costumes they've got 3D sets the music is awe inspiring and some of the moves that they do on stage you haven't even got names for have you? No absolutely because they, we create them uh, for you know, from from fresh and uh, it, sometimes it's just like I'm, I'm sure that when when we come to the stage with Keith, we'll create something. We we probably will give the name of Keith Chegwin or something <laughs> like that. Definitely to one I'll of my own moves. But <laughs> yeah. and you know, our, like the moves our, like Jagger. <laughs> it's like the moves like Jagger. <laughs> exactly. But uh, our performance as well. It's not just figure skating. It's not. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not a big show of of figure skating. It's a storytelling yeah, yeah. because we are on a theatre stage, and that's why Keith 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 is there because. He is a performer, uh, you know, just by nature, and he will he will add lots of things inside there. Great character, and you know, it, we try to tell the story without words. It probably would be difficult for Keith. <laughs> yes. but First time ever, I won't be speaking on stage, which is probably a good thing for the audience. <laughs> but yes. I think that, that should be a very very great addition. Because mm-hmm. I mean, you've been on stage since 
well, we'll say since the age yeah. of nine. We won't say yeah, how was, many yeah, years. Ten. Yeah, so yeah. you've been at it a long old time. Yeah, 46 years. So, right. um, And it's weird because I did a lot of uh, theatre productions as a kid. <clears throat> And I danced in Maine with Ginger Rogers, and I sort of uh, was in the uh, Tom Brown school days with Russell Grant and Simon Le Bon as kids and all this sort of thing. Um, so it's it's nice to be performing because that's what I do. Uh, you know, I mean, people always sort of like poo poo panto and have a go at it, but it's the only chance I get to actually, as a performer, to do something because a lot of people don't know that I sing and play guitar and just tap dance and you know, and now I skate. <laughs> so this will be. Uh, but but on saying that, this is a real challenge, and it's something lovely to have a go at. It my stage of life you know because it's like uh, it's all inspired it's like when Ricky Gervais phones up and trusts you to do an hour-long script of his mm. that I mean that is such a compliment and so is this this is such a compliment really that they actually have got the material and they're saying to Keith Chagan we trust you to put on a performance you know it's not the biggest part of the show but it is a, a hefty role to play and it's going to be a real challenge and rehearsals don't start till later on in the year but no I'm starting now <laughs> 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 That's why we're here. <laughs> is that the costume you're wearing in the actual show? Yeah, this is uh, part of Drosselmeyer. So I know. Is he an owl? Rather, rather fetching, isn't it? <laughs> is it what? Is it, are you an owl? He's a magician. I'm a magician. And oh. he is, is, is a very um, strange character inside of a very, a very strong character. And yeah, because he's a magician, he could be anything. He could be a bird. There you go. Yeah, oh, right. yeah it has something. It's, it's quite a, it's a lovely it's story, The Nutcracker, because it starts on sort of like a celebration at Christmas. And uh, Drosselmeyer arrives, and the kids really don't know who he is. They're quite frightened of him at first. But Clara knows that he's actually the godfather, or her godfather, who brings them presents. And uh, to cut a very long story, story short basically the nutcracker the present that's uh, given to Clara breaks but he manages to repair it and when Clara goes to bed she wakes up in the middle of the night to find that all the toys have come alive and they're all life-size and that's when the real drama starts because there's a battle between the nutcracker and the mouse army and the nutcracker actually wins the army uh, they go through and they sort of like spend time at the uh, the uh, sweet, sweet, sweet land, and that's where you have things like the sugar uh, plum fairy, the dance of the sugar plum fairy, and that's where all the dramatic things happen. So it's a story about love, romance. Uh, oh, it's, it's, it's got and everything in it, isn't it? And the magic, story. yes. And family be, being together with the friends, and the, it's just that magic. And yeah. he is the main man to, to create the magic. And I do magic on stage. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah. So a lot of people will be well. hoping I disappear. I'll tell you what, though. I mean, I remember you when I was a little kid bouncing <laughs> around the TV, being incredibly irritated. Oh, don't. In a, what I know. was it? A jumpsuit? And what was the haircut called? Uh, oh, my gosh. Long? <laughs> 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 yeah, one of those haircuts. Yeah, yeah. But. Uh, uh, yeah, I mean, I've, I've been... been I'm, loads of stuff, though, haven't you? I've been really lucky over the years. I've done mm. everything from acting, singing, dancing, performing, presenting, uh, you know, I've sort of, like, wing-walked, <laughs> I've sort of beaten people in marathons, and my latest effort is that I hold the world record. I've just told you about this. I hold the world record for eating three chocolate eclairs in one minute and five seconds, so I'll be in the Guinness Book of Records next year. Well, there's yeah, actually a world record. There you record go, there is a world record for eating chocolate eclairs. <laughs> <laughs> and then next, Drosselmeyer, the nutcracker, the WMC, <laughs> November. So what is there left for you to do? I don't know. I mean, uh, what's the word? I, I, I've just been the luckiest person in the whole wide world. Things always come to fruition, something always happens for me. So, um, and I'm, oh, I, I, yeah, there's, there's a series going out in America shortly with Ricky Gervais, so oh, that's right, the yeah. next big venture, yeah. so see what happens. Yeah, because you have made, a, I don't know, a bit of a career lately, not only yourself, but yeah. the guy from EastEnders, I don't know his name really, oh, and yeah. Les, De oh, yeah, Les Barry. Dennis, yeah, Barry from you EastEnders. Think? Sean Williams from yeah. Les Dennis and I. Yeah, but it's almost like you've got a career out of being has-beens, almost. Yeah, it's, uh, I mean, yes, there are, there's that derogatory way <laughs> of saying things, but... <laughs> But uh, but yes, I mean basically, what Ricky Gervais does, he even does it to Liam Neeson, Johnny Depp, and uh, Sandra Bullock, and uh, Kate Winslet, and everybody else. Uh, he just basically grabs hold of you and takes the pee out of you. That's yeah. it. And you play that part. But you have to remember, at the end of the day, it's an acting job. 
<laughs> I find it really amusing. Yeah, my actually. mother believes it. I'm <laughs> <laughs> really quite worried. <laughs> Have you got any ambitions to do any serious acting? I don't know. It's funny because when I did uh, a few of the acting roles, I got off things like The Bill and Casualty and all that, and I turned it down. Everybody thinks I take work, you know, mm -hmm. uh, I just grab everything I can, I won't. You know, so to be offered something like the Nutcracker, people would say, well, Keith Chapman will turn that down. I won't because it's such a challenge. Because, what's the word? I have to put in five months' worth of solid work to be able to get two weeks right on stage. And I'm willing to do that because I think it's such a fantastic opportunity that I want people to come along. And as I hopefully did on Dancing Ice, people go, oh, my God, <laughs> he actually did learn to skate. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. So, and now, the, the, what's the word? The goal has been set. And the challenge is, uh, I've got. To, I'm, I'm on the uptake for the challenge, and hopefully, I can fulfil it. Mm. Yeah, because the end of the year, you're going to be on stage in the Millennium Centre with 26 of the yeah. world, the best skaters in the whole wide world. Between them, won 215 medals, gold, silver, and bronze. Uh, and now here's Keith Chapman. <laughs> great. That's quite a bit to live up yeah. to, though. But you see, I've got a great partner, and I've got somebody who's got faith in me, and uh, what's the word? Uh, can guide me through the whole process because it's a different discipline, isn't it, your world? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, this lot, I, I, they train nine hours a day, you know, and that's before the, uh, basically before the curtain opens. <laughs> they're training behind the scenes all the time. And whilst they're doing Sleeping Beauty, they're working on the Nutcracker or Swan Lake or something else, and they're performing all over the world. They're off to, where are you off to now? Madrid and... Uh, Israel? Um, Israel and uh, uh, Bangkok. And yeah. Yeah. I'm sure you'll be very fit by the end of the year, then. Yeah, I am fit now. <laughs> <laughs> Don't knock me. <laughs> I may not look it, <laughs> but I'm trying. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I will. I can't wait. <laughs> no, I've had seven weeks off because I fractured my ankle. Uh, so it's nice to be back on the ice. Yeah. <laughs> you're right. Yeah, fine. I didn't intend to insult you there. It's but fine. Hey, it no, I've counted three so far. <laughs> oh, I'm really not doing work. No, no, you're fine. Okay. Well, thank you so much for talking to us today. Thank you, Jane. No problem. Hey. Radio Cardiff.